Okay, so for those of you guys who don't know what's going on with Twitch and DMCA, essentially what's happening is it's been a problem for a long time and everybody's been using copyright music. If Twitch gets a DMCA strike of some kind, hello black guys, then they have to do something about it. So they have to strike the channels, etc. And one of the things that's going on right now, and everybody has known that for a while because it was a thing a few months ago that everybody was freaking out about. Uh, but the thing that's going on that affects all of us now is essentially that Twitch sent out like a bunch of emails to people who violated DMCA that their system happened to catch. And it was like, hey, we are, well, let's just do this one. I'll have it out here. So we're writing to inform you that your channel was subject to one or more of these DMCA takedown notifications that the content identified has been deleted. So they didn't even give a warning or inform the streamer that their content was in violation of copyright. They just got rid of that for them. And we're like, all right, it's, you're done. You're not going to be able to have anything because we just already deleted it for you. You don't even get to private it or save it. We just destroyed it. We recognize that by deleting this content, we are not giving you the option to file a counter notification or seek a retraction from the rights holder. In consideration of this, we have processed these notifications and are issuing you a one-time warning to give you the chance to learn about copyright law and tools available to manage the content on your channel, AKA 48 hours. Because if you look down here near the bottom, it's saying that the resuming of the normal processing for DMCA takedown notifications received after noon PST on Friday, October 23rd, 2020, will occur, which basically means that at noon PST on Friday, so two days from now, it will not give a warning, it won't delete the content, it'll just straight give you a DMCA strike, which means that if your channel gets three DMCA strikes, you're permanently banned from Twitch, you can't come back from that. So you get hit with a copyright strike, boom, that's one strike on your channel. If you play copyrighted music every single stream, then you have lots of VODs, you have lots of clips that have copyrighted music in it. If they get any kind of DMCA strike, boom, it gets immediately taken off. So if you've been streaming on here for years or months or have any kind of huge backlog of content, now, if they uh, get struck with it, they are just basically gonna ban people. And so they're going to be going through and getting rid of a lot of other people um, and doing that. Well, yeah, cause I played copyrighted music on my stuff cause it wasn't a big deal before. And now that they are doing this, I just deleted basically all of them. I'll have to go back and delete the uh, Phasmophobia one too. I forgot to delete that one, but the, I just took down all of my shit. So if you haven't been playing copyrighted music, you don't really have to worry about it that much. But uh, same with like the clips too. I'm gonna have to go through the rest of my clips. I went through a fuck ton of them already and deleted them, but I'm gonna have to continue to go through more of them and delete more so that my channel can be protected from it because it's not worth my brand getting taken down and struck with something that I can avoid. But the problem is not just that the DMC is there because it's always something that we've, you know, been supposed to be compliant with. with the get away with a lot as content creators because we can do all kinds of stuff. We can use video game characters as, uh, you know, symbols for our channel, like Nintendo, like Pokemon. We can, uh, you know, if you're a super dead by daylight person, you can use a bunch of the killers and stuff from that to, uh, you know, be a part of your channel. Things like that that are obviously copyrighted, but we get away with anyway as streamers as part of our brands. So music is something that is kind of just a part of the the no-no area of all the stuff that we're doing the stupid thing like i get it we need to conform with copyright law the stupid part of this is that twitch is forcing everybody to either delete all of their contents or keep it public there's no option to private your videos there is no option to make it hidden so that you can download it and do it so if you are somebody who's streamed on here for years or has years of data, years of backlog, like years of whatever, years of anything, any kind of data, you now basically have to get rid of all of your shit because if any of it has copyrighted music in it by, you know, two days from now at noon, uh, you're kind of fucked. So that's the issue. Now, are they gonna go through and be able to hear every single piece of copyrighted music? No, but that doesn't mean that the Twitch system isn't going to eventually get smarter 
and retroactively go back and continue to take down more clips. So for your brand's safety and for your channel safety, it's better to just get rid of them. The stupid thing is that they're not giving us enough time to download all of these so we can have them saved for ourselves. So it's a good option if you care about your VODs, if you care about your clips, to start downloading all of those. And just getting ready to hold on to them if you want to use them for any kind of content in the future, if any kind of just even valuable memories that they might have for you. But, yeah, it's so astoundingly dumb to me, like, profoundly dumb that Twitch doesn't have a content ID system like YouTube does. Now, YouTube has the smartest content ID system ever in the entire world, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. But the fact that Twitch doesn't have any kind of content ID to be able to tell creators, hey, this music that you played, this particular song is copyright restricted and is going to get you a strike on your channel so you can't play it. Boom, now I know. Okay, that song is not allowed so I won't do that on my channel anymore. I'll delete that VOD, I'll delete that clip, and I will make sure to avoid that. They don't let you know. And so at some point, you can just get a strike even if the part of your video or clip wasn't muted because a lot of people were just relying on their clips being muted, but Twitch's content ID system is basically non-existent. So anything that it doesn't catch because it's a really faulty system doesn't help you. So it, it's it's kind of shit. It's more tone deaf from Twitch. It's it's stupid from Twitch. Let me uh, show you Devin's take on it because his is quite quite well done. Basically, Devin Nash is a like big industry person and he knows a lot about agencies because he owns co-owns his own agency for creators for talent and works with brands works directly with twitch all the time and does great resources and shows about twitch and business for the industry and he was talking a lot about this so it is insane that twitch informs partners they deleted their content and that there is no and that there is more content and violation despite having no identification system to find out what that content is their solution to dmca for creators is to delete their life's work this is pure, gross negligence. And it is. The simplest thing, which would be a private or a hide button, doesn't exist. They're just like, nah, fam. We're not gonna let you hide your stuff. You wanna save your life's work? Fuck it. We are gonna force you to delete everything if it has any kind of copyrighted content in it, because otherwise you'll be permanently banned from the platform if we catch you. And obviously you don't want that to happen because you don't want to risk it. Uh, as far as if now if you're somebody who doesn't play copyrighted music regularly then obviously it's not going to be an issue but if you are like i was then it's a problem and you have to address it i understand that dmca needs to be followed i used to do it on youtube and you can't play any copyrighted music and stuff on there that's what it's one thing i really liked about streaming was i can listen to whatever music i wanted to because it was very loose at the time for dmca strikes but now that's really not a thing. You can't have that looseness that we used to as streamers for being able to listen to whatever we want because now they're cracking down on it pretty hardcore. And Twitch is one of the biggest platforms to do that with. So it's just not a great situation. But the fact that they threw it to us this way and that they've just been band-aiding this shit forever instead of actually addressing the problem and giving us the resources we need. The, like, think of it this way. The fact that you can download your clips, download your VODs, Upload them to YouTube that does have a good content ID system. And then YouTube will tell you whether or not it's copyrighted material and will result in a strike. And whether or not that particular clip or VOD is then safe to keep on your Twitch channel to avoid a DMCA strike is fucked up. The fact you have to go through a third party to figure out whether your stuff on Twitch will be safe to keep on Twitch for your channel safety is so stupid. It should be endemic to the platform that you're using so that we have the tools we need to do that. And it makes no sense. I don't appreciate that whatsoever. So going through the rest of this one here, we'll just read through that real quick. It says, we know that the copyright law and the DMCA are confusing. Over the past few months, we've been improving the tools available to help you manage your music in your live and recorded content. These include the ability to delete all of your clips at once and control who can create clips on your channel. Scanning new clips in Audible Magic and launching a free way to stream high quality music on your channel, soundtrack by Twitch, which is its own set of issues in and of itself that we're going to talk about. 
Now that these tools have been released to all creators, we're going to resume the normal processing of DMCA takedown notifications received after 12 noon PST on Friday, October 23rd, 2020. To avoid receiving a DMCA takedown notification for the recorded content that remains on your channel, I recommend that you do the following actions. Review your clips and VODs and delete anything that includes copyrighted material, which we just talked about. Join the creator camp, which is a fucking joke in and of itself. And review Twitch's guidelines. So literally, they say what you can do. Delete your life's work or leave it and risk getting struck, which is which is so dumb. Um, the reason it's something that I want to talk about now and want everybody in my community to know so that everybody in my community who's a streamer can be safe is because this is going on by October 23rd noon. So literally two days from now, less than two days now, if you do not either download and delete or just straight up delete all of your VODs and clips that have copyrighted material in them, copyrighted music, copyrighted whatever, then your channel is at risk for getting DMCA striked. And if you get three strikes, you're out. You're permanently banned from Twitch. You can't come back from that. And it's not worth risking your brand or your business over. So I've already deleted most of mine. I'm going to have to delete the last Phasmophobia one that we did. I've deleted most of my clips. I'm probably going to have to delete all of my clips, uh, which sucks. But it just kind of is what it is. Uh, it's not worth uh, keeping them on to do all that. Big streamers don't get a pass. Streamers, big streamers, were the ones who got this original email, which is why Devin said that they're informing Twitch partners, because they didn't send this email out to affiliates, because affiliates don't matter. They sent this out to partners whose VODs had violated and were talking openly about this on Twitter, because they're the ones who were priority for it. So that's why. They're not being able to be avoided. Even big streamers are being affected by this. Everybody on Twitch is. And that's why it's an issue that we have to talk about. So, okay, we know that it's a problem. We know that we only have two days to figure it out until October 23rd at noon PST. And we also know that uh, we can't use anything in order to be safe from it. So what can we do instead? There is a list of resources that Devin Nash is creating for streamers that I'm going to keep an eye on, and whenever he makes and releases that, I'll release it in my Discord server. So if you guys want to join my Discord server, and all the free resources that I will be doing out will be in there. We have a stream center that I always pin resources and stuff to. Um, so you can join that. Link is in the chat if you guys want to join on in there. The most important thing that we can do right now is obviously just use NCS copyright free strep. But what is copyright free? And that's where the safest, best system is YouTube. Because they have the best content ID system in the entire world. That tells you exactly what's copyright, if you look above my head, and what isn't. If it doesn't have the music in this video part, it means that it's safe to play because there won't be copyrights with it. Uh, your guys' brands and what you build is too important to for me to just sit here and expect you guys to know. I'd much rather have a good discussion about this and, like, talk about it. So, I appreciate that. It, it is dumb, Ritz, because, like, you aren't claiming the music as yours, but you are still broadcasting it. The issue is, so you, whenever you play on Spotify or whenever you play music on Apple Music or like wherever, you paid to listen to that song for your own personal use. You did not pay to broadcast that song to hundreds or thousands of other people, which is what happens in a stream or a video on YouTube, for example. Thousands of other people hear that song and that artist is not getting the thousands of plays that they would and so they're not getting the money that they would otherwise because it's going out to all these people who didn't listen to it themselves. Because music companies, money, etc. It, it all comes down to money at the bottom line. And they don't want that. They want money every single play. So they force you not to be able to do it. Yeah, of course it's all great. Absolutely. Like I said, you want to go on here if you're wondering whether song. Something I really wanted to show you guys, the reason that I kept this other tab open, was I just looked up NCS playlist, right? Non-copyright sound. I was like, let's see what playlists they have. I'm going to be making my own playlist over the next few days, and I'll make it public on my uh, channel. So if you guys want to listen to the same playlist that I will be making that is actually copyright free, you can because I don't like listening to lo-fi, I don't like listening to electronic, I don't like listening to chill shit. I actually like listening to pumped up metal rock, like get your body moving dance type shit, uh, which I know a lot of you guys enjoy too. So I'm going to be looking for music like that to have in my playlist and I'll, I'll share that with all of you guys as I create it. But what I wanted to say was like, oh, oh, non-copyright sound, I can totally just press play on this and have it on my channel, right? Wrong. 
because you look down here, no copyright sound is literally the channel that they do. You scroll down, boom, music in the video. Song, rain, artist, exactly who it is, licensed by AEI on behalf of Broadcast Music Incorporated on a literal track that is from non-copyright sound that's supposed to be copyright free. It's actually copyrighted. So if you played this on your channel on Twitch, you can be copyrighted by NCS. So keep that in mind. Just because something says it's NCS does not mean it is. You have to look at the bottom of all of the songs that you want to play and figure out if it is. So even if you're on Spotify, you can't know. Because if you're like, oh, well, how do I tell that on Spotify? Or how do I tell that on Apple Music? Because I don't use YouTube for it. You can't. You can't know. And you cannot risk just trusting someone else to do it for you. Because if you trusted all NCS music that just said it was NCS on Spotify, you could get potentially host, just like here. And I don't want that for you guys. So what you're going to have to do instead is go through and make your own playlist and see if it is. So like, for example, I'm on Stream Beats by Harris Heller right now because I just knew for a fact that his was copyright free with Senpai Records. And if you look, completely free. There's nothing down here that has the music stuff. It's just the regular description. It doesn't say music by. There's not going to be any copyright stuff. You can just listen to it and it's done. Same with everything. Every single song from Stream Beats is free. So if you guys want something that you know for right now is 100% safe, every single song by Stream Beats, and they have over 500 tracks right now, is. But they don't have rock. They don't have metal. They don't have pop. It's all like lo-fi EDM stuff, more like chill things, which I don't like personally. But for now, it's fine. It's what we have. It's good. And then I'll figure out like rock and metal stuff, which will be good to go on from there. What about movie copyright? No, that's completely copyrighted. 100,000% monster. That is a great question. And you cannot do that either. No. Uh, same thing with some songs, even from video games. If a company, for example, Nintendo is notorious for this. So if you play a... Nintendo song, like from Pokemon, for example. Let's say that you play the original Route 2 soundtrack, and because you really like the sound of Route 2 from Pokemon Red and Blue. Uh, Nintendo has been known to go through people on YouTube and copyright strike them for using their content not in the game that they were playing it with. And they don't like their shit being used outside of the game it's being used from. So not all video game tracks are safe. I, anything from Nintendo, I would stay far away from unless it's like a cover of a Nintendo song that you found is copyright free, which is kind of few and far between. But Jonathan Young is a good example of somebody who does that. Like for example, um, the Jonathan Young uh, metal Pokemon theme song is uh, one that's not copyrighted right now. The one that I did my drag performance to. So this one wouldn't be able to be DMCA strike because right now it's not on here because it's not one that would be copyright striked. However, wouldn't the Twitch soundtrack be a way for these big record companies to get a cut? No, because Twitch soundtracks doesn't actually pay any of the artists that are on there. And they only want artists on there that are willing to be paid in exposure, which is why... It's such a problem because the Twitch soundtrack is bad. One, because it doesn't pay artists. And two, because songs on there, just because they are songs that said that they would willing to be on there and also be willing to be paid in exposure doesn't mean that it's not copyrighted somewhere else. Uh, so definitely GTA radio. Oh yeah, no, GTA is gonna die for radio. Like there's still gonna be GTA roleplay, but nobody's ever going to be able to listen to the radio, Papiola. And uh, games like Beat Saber, Osu, um, uh, Clone Hero, um, literally anything that has music in it, that has copyrighted music in it, you're not going to be able to do. All those rhythm-based games are going to die. Yeah, exactly, Rock Band. Any, any rhythm-based game, any song-based game, Just Dance, is going to be completely dead from the platform. So all the Just Dance streamers, <laughs> they're screwed. Everybody that has Beat Saber, they're screwed. They have to delete everything, get rid of absolutely everything, and you're not even safe to stream it. Because I was talking with Devin earlier today, and I was asking him questions because he knows this better than anyone else. And I was asking him what 
was the things around karaoke. So not just like a karaoke track, but even you just singing a cappella to a song that's copyrighted. You're not even safe if you're singing a cappella to a copyrighted song because the music company can still strike you for singing their song that they have licensed, which they've done to streamers in the past. So you can't even sing like the chorus to a song that you really like on your stream because that's not safe. And if that gets clipped and that gets out, you can still get striked for it. Um, I also was asking about the video game track, so I could tell you guys about that too. Some tracks are probably going to be safer, like Ori and the Will of the Wisps. I really doubt that that's going to happen. Well, wait, but Twitch sings. You mean the thing they're getting rid of in January because it's not profitable and they're uh, <laughs> getting rid of it because it's way too much of a headache for copyright claims as well? Yeah, that one. Uh, they're just making the whole problem worse instead of making it better. Well, the thing is, DMCA and copyright was always a thing. It's not that they're making the situation worse. It's something that we were always supposed to be following, but that Twitch did a really shit job of actually holding streamers accountable for, and so we just assumed that we would always be able to get away with it. Now, that is a fault on the part of the broadcaster, because us as streamers should know copyright law enough to know that we shouldn't be using DMCA uh, strikeable music, but... At the same time, no, nothing was happening. So we were like, well, it's pretty loose. Nobody's actually doing anything with it. No companies are looking at Twitch. But after Twitch started to get big and Twitch started to have streamers on it that streamed to tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people, Ninja, Ninja's Pon 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 song, you know, his Pon Pon Ba Ba Ba, that, like, that whole thing, that he's been copyright claimed from the company that does that because they're like, oh, you're using our Japanese pop music on your stream to millions of people and we're not getting the money for it, we're going to copyright strike you. So it's not just a problem for small and medium streamers. Big streamers have had issues with it before. It might kill Twitch. It's not going to, it's not going to, it, well, actually it, it, it could, Trovo, because here's, here's the way, here's the way that it's going to go down. So essentially everybody complies because they're forced to comply this is a federal issue copyrighted dmca thing is a federal level twitch has to comply in order to stay within the mandates of everything so if they don't comply they get they get destroyed and they were trying to avoid this and have streamers actually be compliant so it didn't get to this point and obviously nobody fucking listened so you know there there is that but instead of giving us the option to hide our content they're just like no delete absolutely fucking everything and get over yourselves you have two days to do it but it can because if, for example, somebody uh, large who plays music, like XQC, XQC is one of the biggest streamers on the platform. He constantly plays copyrighted music. Same with Trainwrecks. They also play copyrighted music all the time. Um, they're at risk of it, so if they don't delete their stuff, they, they, could, they could get banned. You can't come back from a DMCA strike. That's not something repealable. Um, so... That's that, that it would it, it would potentially if people don't take it seriously, a lot of people are going to get hit by this because Twitch can't play favorites. They federally legally have to comply with every single strike that comes their way and it would get rid of them. Uh, Twitch is owned by Amazon. Couldn't they do a deal with Amazon Music? They could, but just because it's owned by Amazon doesn't mean that it's easy to do that. And even if they do something with Amazon Music, they it's that's like saying do a deal with Spotify. They aren't going to get a broadcast license for music to literally every single streamer because that would cost them tens of thousands of dollars per the millions and millions of streamers that they have on their platform to treat each of their individual broadcasts as a radio station that they are legally allowed to use all the music on Amazon to play to their audience. So that would never in any universe ever happen. What if an original song sounds like another song and YouTube says it's copyrighted? Then YouTube system could do it and that's where a counterclaim would come in. So if you have a song that sounds like a copyrighted song and it accidentally claims it, then you can counter that claim on YouTube specifically. Like if you're streaming on YouTube or if you've uploaded a video on YouTube and it's the wrong one, and you can usually win. If we're talking about Twitch, then you can also do a counterclaim on the DMCA for like a false positive of that, but the likelihood of you actually going through all the headache to do that through Twitch is not very high because it's going to take a lot of work. They already have the thing for videos with some movies which are owned by other companies. Yes, but having a just broad license for every single broadcaster to rebroadcast as a radio station and there are almost, there are 6 million, nearly 6 million streamers on Twitch. 
to do that with, that's literally tens of thousands of dollars per streamer. Tens of thousands of dollars times six million. Amazon would never do that, ever. That's not a thing, that's not gonna happen. It's its own different thing with movies. This is just about music. So, okay, we know all this shit is happening. We know that we need to use YouTube in order to actually figure out what's copyright free was it so we can make our own playlist. Now, let's say that we want to still have it show up on our screen. So you know how we have like the now playing thing on it for, uh, you know, like when we do exclamation mark song and that pops up where it says right here uh, by highway. I have this one different from the one that we normally do on my regular screen because I wanted to show you guys exactly how we are going to go through the process of having that sexy looking handy dandy crisp thing from now playing on pixel chat work with a YouTube playlist because to make sure that all of our songs are copyright free with the YouTube content ID system, I will be over the course of probably a long time compiling just a huge actual copyright free playlist uh, for anybody to use and I'll have it be public. So if you guys want to listen to it too, you can. But if you want to show up on stream there, we're gonna go through showing you guys how to do that right now. Uh, Corpse on YouTube owns all of his own songs and has really good music. And if you like his stuff, you can ask him and get rid of permission for it. He has all of his stuff, Corpse. Let's see, he has seven videos. If we listen to Agoraphobic, they just put that out one day ago. Number 10 on trending, that's pretty cool. Oh, and it's not on the content ID system. It doesn't have the other one on there. That's nice, Jeffy Kim. Interesting. Okay. Uh, he has his own SoundCloud and stuff. Corpse. I'll have to keep that in mind. Thank you for letting me know. I'll see if we can get permission from him. Because that's the best thing to do is exactly like Jeffy Kim said. If you know somebody that has the complete and universal rights to their own music and they give you written permission in an email or in a Twitter DM or literally anything that's written um, that says, yes, you can play my music, you can use it. But again, you just have to be careful because in the future it could go back and get uh, revoked. But it's better to listen to dope shit and have the permission for it for several years than not, you know what I mean? Because it's better than listening to the sound of silence in our own minds. Uh, yeah, and all the songs he's posted, which is great, which is great. So if you have artists like that that you want to listen to, you can. Um, I know that in Devon's stream when I was in his earlier God is an Astronaut is an artist that owns all the rights to their own music and he messaged them to ask if they had permission to have any Twitch streamers use their songs, if that would be allowed. And they said, no, oh, I don't know what they said because they haven't written them back yet. But he reached out to them, which is something that I'm going to do to Corpse. So I'll hit him up on Twitter. You know what? Let's do it right now, guys. Let's do this right now. Um, let's go ahead and see if they do it. Faceless, I make music sometimes I don't even know anymore. Yeah, that's, that's totally fine. I will message them and we'll see what's uh, going on with that. So we're going to say, um, all right. Hello, Corpse. I really like your music and wanted to know if you uh, were the uh, sole rights owner uh, to your discography. If so, would it be allowed to use your music on, uh, Twitch streams to, uh, listen to, uh, with our communities? Actually, we just say to, uh, uh, to listen. Uh, I really like your music. I want to know if you were the sole rights owner to your discography. If so, would it be allowed to use your music on Twitch streams to listen to? And if they say yes, if they are the sole rights owner for it, they give us permission, boom, a Twitter DM is still written permission, and you would be able to hear back. Will I hear back from them? I don't know. They might leave me on red. They might never respond. I have no idea. But at least we reached out and tried. And that's more than just assuming, you know what I mean? So it's good to go from there. But that's kind of what's going on with the DMCA. And to protect yourselves, go through, do the YouTube content ID system. Uh, make sure that you are looking through everything that you need to yourself and be safe and prepared for it to make sure that everything's completely kosher in the kind of music that you want. Is it gonna take time to compile a playlist? Yes. Is it worth it so that your channel and your brand is safe? Yes. You don't want to leave the fate of yourself in someone else's hand. So, a mess, I tells you. Yeah, it is. It's kind of, kind of a mess. 
I'm not gonna lie. It's a lot. It's a lot going on on that.